still behind us? Although our pace is diminished to a sluggish walk, even that is difficult to maintain. I glance back wild-eyed. But the forest is deathly still. Apart from our huffing, the snowy woods are frozen, lifeless. All right, Theo, then why don't you make sure you don't compliment the fucking aesthetic? I think we're good. I find a rocky outcrop and park on it. Mia's shivering in the snow, barefoot and still in her nightgown. Okay, okay, I know, I know, I know. I'll be the gentleman. I peel off a couple of layers and toss them at her. There, here you go. Oh no, you don't have to. You, you'll freeze to death, come on. I persist. Pressing them on her, underpowered by my lack of enthusiasm, but overpowered by the frost. She accepts them and starts covering up. Better get a look now or you'll never shut the fuck up. I pull out the map I stole from the train and try to study it. But fuck, it's all colored blotches to me. Hey, um, you don't know how to read a map, do you? I'm not great, but give it a try. Um, you don't have a compass, do you? No, uh, there was one on the train, but I, I didn't have time to grab it. Um, can we make do without one? I really don't want to have to go back to the train. We were lucky enough to get away from there once. <sighs> I might be able to make sense of the map if I could track the sun's positions. We'll have to wait till day. We could keep walking till then. Uh, I, I th think it's better if we rest up during the night. We'll probably be able to cover more distance during the day, you know, when it's warmer. What if those things catch up? We could sleep in shifts. If one of us sees trouble, we can wake the other and bolt. I mean, look, they weren't too quick last time. We outran them once, we can probably do it again. Yeah, definitely should not have said probably. Mia thinks for a bit, and then sighs. I guess there's no helping it. Do you want to set camp here? Looking around, it seems too exposed over here. Even if the dead don't catch up, anything could be lurking in the darkness. No, no, I don't like this place. Let's, um, let's keep walking for a bit and see if anything better comes along. <sighs> Alright. Rubbing our arms to keep warm, we walk forward. Still trying to wrap our heads around how everything could spin shit side so quickly. So, Theo, right? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I didn't think you'd come back for me. Don't get me wrong, I am really glad you did. It's just... Yeah. Why did you risk your life for me? She's trying to sound casual, but I can tell what she's insinuating. Oh, that. Um, love at first sight. You looked really pretty in that nightgown and, uh... Yeah, you don't find that funny, no. Uh, it was my shitty sense of humor. Look, I don't know. Safety in numbers, I suppose. And, um, also, I don't know. I, I, th I think we've met before. I th you look really familiar. You help me because I look familiar? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, suddenly the door burst, 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 so... Who are you? Instead of thinking, thinking up some lie, you're lying on the floor suppressing a fucking stiffy. What happened outside? Construction. Fucking thank you. Come on, hon. Get cleaned up. You look like hell. It's, it's, it's her. It's the chick from the fucking butchery. Wait, wait, don't you remember me? We, we met in Winston. Uh, Winston? Yeah, yeah, when I fell and crashed through your butchery's window. I'm looking at her, waiting for her to remember that guy she helped patch up. And she stopped walking now, looking at me, carefully. I've never been to Winston before, and I sure don't own a butchery. What? No. It would... It's definitely you. Are, are, are you sure? Uh, positive. Why, is that why you saved me? Well... That, 
and the fact that I can't make heads or tails of this map. I was hoping you could get me out of this mess. Oh, <laughs> then I'll do my best to get us out of this mess. Her features relaxed to a smile. But I can tell she doesn't trust me. But that's all right, because this partnership isn't about trust. It's about necessity. This chick can think I'm a weirdo all she wants, as long as she gets me out of this fucking ice tray. We're walking past an ancient looking grove. Although the trees are leafless, age has hunched most of them over. What do you think of this place? Looks kind of gloomy. I scratch my head, wondering why she wants to talk about scenery. I mean to camp at. Oh, um, um, yeah, yeah, good, good place works. Nice. She sighs, relieved that something was finally going right. We walk around the snowy tree graveyard and find a large, hollowed-out trunk. That'll do great, don't you think? Yeah. Um, here. I drop a bundle of gray sticks onto the floor. I, I pick these up. Um, firewood. Good idea. What? Well, I don't know how to start a fire. Oh. So what, just because I know how to read a map, I'm some kind of survival expert? She raises her eyebrow, <laughs> rolls her eyes when she sees the I thought it went without saying expression. She grabs a couple of sharp looking rocks and a few minutes later, a warm glow is illuminating the inside of the tree. She beams proudly at the growing flame. Hmm. There we go. Nice work, Miss Grills. <laughs> I'll take the first shift once you get some sleep. Mm, you sure? Yeah, go on. I'm still. And she's asleep. Wow, that didn't take long. So, I turned the other way, stealing myself for the cold, lonely hours to follow. And surprisingly, after everything tonight, sleep doesn't creep on me. There's too much keeping me from drifting off. Like, what the fuck were those things at the train, man? Most of them had lost their limbs, yet they still dragged themselves towards us. The image makes me shudder, so I try to force it out of my mind. If I'm not careful, paranoia will bring the nightmares alive. So I tend to the fire and keep the cold from consuming the only source of warmth on this dark, cold night. The wind's wild howls are blotting out the night's cries, and apart from the crackling fire and Mia's gentle breathing, I don't hear anything. Why doesn't she remember me? I mean, it's, it's not, I'm not making a big deal out of it or anything. I'm just saying, I'm sure that's her. But she's, she says she's never even been to Winston. Fuck, that would make sense. Whatever, I don't know. Maybe she's got a sister or something. This is Anna from the band Cellar Darling, and right now you're listening to SOB. Shadow. The, the 
The very one who's staring right back. Theo? Theo. Mia's shaking me, Theo? looking concerned. Theo. I'm startled by the screams echoing through the woody hollow. My dry, raspy throat tells me who they are. <sighs> Shit, Theo? not again. Theo. I clamp my mouth shut and wipe the cold sweat off my forehead. After a moment of hard breath, I'm fine. I give me a reassuring smile. Um, did I oversleep? No. You've only been asleep half an hour. Are you all right? I'm, I'm fine. Sorry if I scared you. Uh, fucking nightmares. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> yeah. No thank you. Not in the mood for share time. Well, unless you want to talk about me being eaten by rabid bananas. I'm afraid there's really not much to talk about. Oh, um... Are all these bananas you dream about called... Ashido? Oh, fuck. She's trying to sound casual about it, but... I guess there's no help in it. Yeah, um... Sorry if I creeped you out. Um... Didn't mean to... Just always had a problem with night terrors, you know? You said Ashida, right? Yeah. Didn't think anybody really knew about him. You haven't heard? He's the only person to escape from Borstal Penitentiary. I prod the embers, hiding my grimace. The only one, huh? The cannibal cannibal. Apparently he killed over a dozen guards and prisoners breaking out. But if you hadn't heard about his escape... Uh, yeah. The cannonball cannibal and I, uh... Kinda go back. Alright, fuck it. I don't like talking about it. But I guess it's better to fess up anyway. Sighing, I point to the long scars zigzagging down my cheek. And tell her about my past. How Ashido butchered everybody. How he left Yomi and me alone. How I was lucky enough to get away with just this scar. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have. No, no, it's cool. Don't, don't worry about it. It must have been really tough. On you and your brother. Losing your family like that. Eh. Yomi was too small to remember much of his childhood, so there's not really much for him to miss. And to be honest, can't really say he's the only one. I don't really remember much of my childhood either. Uh, fuck, I don't know why, but after, you know, after Ashido, everything's a blank. Even my last name. Grief does that, sometimes. When you go through something that's too traumatic for you to remember, your mind shuns it. Or I'm just a dumbass. <laughs> I'll hold off on the judgment till we're better acquainted then. Smiling slightly, she tosses a cool pebble into the flame. I guess we're in the same boat. I don't remember much of my past either. What, really? Mia nods, telling me her story. Yeah. I can't remember anything up to a couple of months ago. She woke up two months ago in the middle of a street with no clue where she was or what her name was. She didn't even know what the octagon was. It was a pretty crazy shock when I found out I was essentially living in a big prison. But she adjusted quite well, working odd jobs here and there. She made just enough to wander around without an empty stomach, hopefully, sniffing out her identity along the way. By the time she finishes, there's a bitter look in her eyes. Maybe I have some family, but if so, I've got no idea where they are or even what their name is. As her hauntingly dismal predicament sinks in, something occurs to me. Yo, um, yo, you said you don't remember anything, right? From, from two months ago. Well, about a month ago, I ran into somebody who looked exactly like you and Winston. No bullshit, I thought maybe I was remembering wrong, but no. No, the more I think about it, the more I'm sure of it. That shit looked exactly like you. I, I... And I stop rambling like a moron when I see the look on Mia's face. She's turned to, no, away from me. She bites down, trying to seal the cracking facade she's been handling me with. Uh, are you sure? 
I reply softly, realizing the gravity of what I'm insinuating, the implications of this bread come I, a complete stranger, am offering to her. M Mia, sh she looked exactly like you. Slowly, she returns to face me. However, there's something different about the way she's looking at me now. Whether from desperation or a naive grasp at hope, her poker face seems to be slipping off. She chuckles, stoking the logs. Hmm. You know, it's funny. <laughs> I turned every rock. I dug through every hole. Ventured into every alley. And I didn't find anything. But... <laughs> I get lost in the middle of goddamn nowhere and... <laughs> I might just have found what I've been looking for. Once we get out of here, could you, could you show me? No, no, you ain't got time for this, say no. Yeah, sure. Can you stop thinking with the head in your pants for two goddamn seconds? You need to get back to Ayame. Sh shut up, it's on the way, okay? It's not like we're doing her any favors. Thank you, Theo. You have no idea. No, no, don't worry about it. Anyway, it's easier to be traveling with a happy someone than a bitchy someone, right? I stick my head through the hole in the short wooden ceiling and glance at the slightly lightening horizon. Hey, um, sun's almost up. Yeah, you got the map? Yeah? Yo, where does it say we should go? She sprawls over to the map and grabs it. I was studying it while you were asleep. The closest town is Bryce Peaks, but it's almost two days' walk from here. Do you remember what the crew said about the big blizzard? Powder wave. Fuck, don't tell me. Yeah, it's supposed to be hitting sometime. Really soon. I'm not sure if we can make it before fuck, it strikes. Fuck, 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 fuck's sake! I get out of the hollow log, wincing as the frigid morning air chews my face and stings my lungs. Shit, okay. Okay, then we gotta get moving. The sun's coming out. Can you make out where Bryce is? Mia follows me out gingerly, adjusting to the cold. She gazes at the pinkish morning sky and points to my left. If we keep going straight east, then we should get there. Alright. Alright. Alright, ringing my teeth together, I start trudging through the ankle-deep snow, hoping that for once Lady Luck doesn't use our fortunes as her potty. We've been marching in silence for most of the day, our chattering teeth keeping us from talking much. Soggy, cold and wet, we keep powering through the conditions. It's only as dusk starts to set in that I realize how hungry I am. And considering how much I ate on the rail rail, I think I'll survive until we get to Bryce, but... Shit, I don't know how Mia's doing. I don't know if it's the walk, but she's lagging behind. Hey, uh, hey Mia, how are you doing? Um, are you hungry? <sighs> I'm starving. <laughs> I haven't eaten for days. For days? Why didn't you eat anything on the train? Bites her lip, looking embarrassed. Well, I, um, I didn't exactly have a ticket, so I had to hide in one of the uh, cargo boxes. <laughs> well, I I'm sorry, not all of us can afford tickets. Yeah, well, neither could I. I sneaked on too. I'm just laughing because I'm ashamed. I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> the frown breaks. She looks kind of tickled. So what do you think? Can we walk at night? Um, I'd rather not. Without the sun, we could just end up walking straight back the way we came from. It's safer to wait until dawn. Alright, then uh, let's, uh, let's just get as far as we can before nightfall. Then we can look for something to eat, right? Looking forward to it. I wish I was a rock star living in a lake, driving in my house. Hey, this is Linda from Health Lives, and you're listening to SOB.
I've been scavenging the snowy wood for food for the past hour, but everything except cold, darkness, and frostbitten branches has eluded me. It's hard to see anything in the pitch black with only small torch lighting the way. Mia stayed at camp and should be tending to the fire right now. She wanted to come along and help look for food, but no, nah, man. Today's walk was really hard on her. People march on their stomachs and since hers is empty, she just fucking collapsed in the dark. No, it, no it's, it's better this way. I'll, I'll, I'll find her something. Blindly trudging through the snow, I cast light on my surroundings, hoping to find something edible. And there I found something. Oh, thank God. Thank you. It looks like some sort of berry bush. And although the thorns coating the leaves and branches easily outnumber the fruit, the fat, opulent blueberries dangling off them look too enticing to pass on. Navigating my hands through the woody needles, I start plucking the opulent fruit off. Suddenly, something rustles behind me. Startled, I drop the fruit and swerve around, jamming my torch into the darkness. But there's nothing there. Huh. It's my imagination. It's okay. Relieved. I start to turn around, but before I can, a small damp burst of breath on my chest freezes me still. Confused, I again point my torch there, but see nothing. It's still pitch black. Wait, shouldn't the torch light it up? Oh no. My breath catches in my throat as I realize that this isn't darkness. It's a fucking bear! <laughs> 